Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a great week so far. I hope you're staying healthy and happy. Welcome Fuang, welcome Lamia, Silviana. Nice to see many of our members in the class. And welcome students, Chetraj, Chipo, Devyanshi, Gashem, Nam, Habib. Good to have many of you here with me today for this IELTS uh, speaking class, speaking part one, talking about school. Definitely a very uh, popular topic on the IELTS that seems to crop up quite frequently. Students, um, this lesson and the materials that you are about to see come from our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. These websites are the textbooks for these live classes. They have all of our practice exams, lesson videos, audio CDs for listening, and they have a lot of bonus features like interactive speaking with students that we will use today for the speaking section. So definitely check out aehelp.com looks like this with the blue background. Click this big red button to join the premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and it doesn't cost much, so it's well worth it. We're an IDP affiliate, we're a British Council partner, we're an IELTS test registration center. So you're in great hands with us and we always have a little special discount code for those of you joining these live classes. Today that code is coming from our most recent speaking video release. It's CTRL nine so basically control nine and when you apply that code you will get a 10 percent discount the uh, price is different in different countries so check out your local cost and currency welcome sarah our chat moderator general ielts website looks like this green background click this big red button here to join the premium ielts package again it's a one-time payment for lifetime access so definitely visit us there and check it out all right everyone getting a bit deeper into our content um, you can uh, download our apps from your app stores academic IELTS help general IELTS help the app will link to your web account so you can learn from the app or the web account you only need to uh, get the premium version in one and then you get it in both uh, for Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help, G IELTS help, you will see reels and vocabulary videos on our Instagram for IELTS. Uh, you will also see the schedule for these live classes. And then if you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. We love getting emails, we love answering your questions, so just send us whatever question you have about IELTS English or our products and we'll be happy to get back to you ASAP. Um, you can also get our books from Amazon or exam books. Just search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS and then you'll get the physical actual paper book delivered to your house or your mailing address. Uh, this week, students, January 26th to the 28th, we're almost through the first month of 2023. Time certainly does fly. Um, so right now we have speaking part one, of course. Uh, tomorrow uh, we'll have a bit of an earlier class, a reading for members, and then we'll have another reading class for subscribers. So definitely subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button, get notifications so that you know when these live classes are happening. Uh, speaking part two, speaking part three on Saturday. No special event this Sunday, okay? All right, students, uh, here's a link to our most recent speaking video with some great tips for you to get a higher band score in your IELTS exam. Make sure to check that out. I've put this link into the chat for you so you can click on it and then open it up in a different window to watch it later. Welcome, Romelia, Raquea, Domenico. Nice to see many more students. Andrew, many more members in the class now. All right, so let's get into it speaking part one 
The IELTS speaking takes about 12 to 15 minutes. The goal to get a high band score, simply put, is just to have a very clean, professional, high quality conversation with the examiner based on the questions that the examiner is asking you. Now that's easier said than done, that's for sure. But it can be done as long as you are focused and as long as you pay attention to good English and good communication features. So that's what we're going to discuss today, what that entails. IELTS speaking part one, the first part, speaking has three parts. Uh, part one takes about five minutes, introductions and then questions on a general topic like today talking about school. And then you'll have a part two cue card, the long part and the part three. So we will do that later in the week on Saturday. Right now we'll focus on part one, we'll focus on good introductions and answering questions with clarity. That's at the top of the agenda for the day. So you get to your exam and um, you show up early, okay? It's really important that you're using English all day on the day of your speaking interview. In fact, you should be using English all day uh, when you're doing your sitting exam, the listening, reading, writing part as well. Use English as much as possible. <laughs> so uh, the brain doesn't like to switch between languages, um, uh, especially not when it's under pressure to perform at a high level. So you want to keep your brain in English, thinking in English, uh, so that you uh, just show your highest uh, English ability or your best English when you're in the actual test. And then you go to your exam, you go early, you go an hour early, you practice with other candidates. So be brave, uh, find other students, go and talk to them, say hi. Are you here for the IELTS speaking exam? You are, that's fantastic. Would you mind helping me out? Uh, could you practice some questions with me? I can ask you a few questions, you can ask me a few questions, just so that we can get our brain going on these uh, IELTS speaking interview questions specifically. And then if the person says, no, I'm super nervous, I'm going to sit here, bite my nails, wait for the exam, then go, well, all right. No problem, I'll go find somebody else. And then go find somebody else, don't give up, okay? Keep trying. All right, <clears throat> so, and even practice these introductory questions because often students are the most nervous in the first couple minutes and they tend to speak in awkward ways um, for the introductory questions because they're very nervous. May I see your identification? Yes, my full name is Peter Smith. Um, I came here on a bus. Okay, can I see your identification? Yes, I live with three people in an apartment. Okay. Can I see your identification, <laughs> right? So when we're nervous, our brain tends to do, you know, funny things. Um, so practice those questions with a person. Say, hey, can we practice those introductory questions just so we feel comfortable? So get into it. All right, students, uh, let's do this. So uh, IELTS speaking, remember, you're not speaking to your English teacher. Your IELTS examiner will not try to get you to speak fluent English. It's up to you, you have to show fluent English, okay? So IELTS speaking part one, show fluency from the very beginning. Use full sentences. Make sure you're accurate, okay? All right, let's do this, everyone. So um, just give me your answers. I will take a look, we'll match up. And of course, this is speaking. So make sure to uh, speak and repeat throughout today's lesson and exercises, okay? It's very important. When you catch new vocabulary, write it down immediately. And then after class, use it. Make a unique sentence with it, okay? So, um, may I see your identification? Give me a nice full sentence answer. While you're thinking about it, yes, Sarah, you're absolutely right. We are in an IELTS training class here, which is intermediate. English and above, so everybody in the chat should clearly be using English, okay? If you've got something funny to say, if you've got an insult for someone, do it in English, all right? If you've got something nice to say, do it in English, all right? 
do yourself a favor do it in English. So here we go. May I see your identification? Okay, Marco Margarita says, let's see what Marco says here. Marco says, certainly here is my ID card that I used to register. Please have a look. Good, solid. All right, I like it. Marco, makes sense. It's fluent. It's a full sentence. It sounds natural. Certainly, here's my ID card that I used to register. Please have a look. Very good. Silviana, says yes gladly here is my id card that i have used for registration last month please have a look now students make sure that if you're showing your passport say passport don't say id card it's strange to say id card for a passport so if you're using an id card say it if you're using your driver's license in some countries that's okay that's an official ID, of course, in Canada, for example, and then say, this is my driver's license. If you're using your passport, say, this is my passport. Okay, so make sure that you actually name the ID correctly. All right. Uh, Domenico has a very fluent answer here for us. We'll take a quick look. So Domenico says, certainly just give me a moment to dig it out of my pocket as it has got stuck in it. Here's my passport, which I used to register for this exam a few weeks ago. Please have a look. Domenico, it's not bad, but it's a bit over speaking. So don't be overzealous. Okay. Um, because then the examiner will get worried that you're going to be a bit too talkative. Okay. So Domenico, certainly just give me a moment to dig it out of my pocket is okay. You don't need to say as it has got stuck. That's understood. Clearly you're trying to dig it out of your pocket because it's stuck, okay? So just an important piece of advice, students, you have to find that sweet spot when you're giving answers. Do not over speak, okay? That means once you have given an answer, plus an explanation, uh, plus an example, then uh, you want to stop, okay? And uh, don't double explain and don't over explain. Be concise, okay? It's important. So good communication is concise communication. It's clear communication, but it doesn't repeat, okay? Doesn't mean you just say yes here, okay? That's a bit too concise. Um, so you need to find that sweet spot, okay? All right, um, what is your full name? Give me a nice full sentence in Silviana Domenico Fuang. I see some thumbs up, Chayani, so. I know that you're understanding what I'm saying. You're picking up what I'm putting down. All right, Habib, I see your answer. Habib says, my given name is Habib and my surname is Ola. My home, whole name is Habib Ola. Please call me Habib. All right, so Habib, this is what I mean about over speaking, right? You don't need that much. So my given name is Habib and my surname is Ola. Obviously your whole name is Habib Ola. I get that because you just told me that. So please call me Habib. Okay, sure. That's good, you don't need to repeat yourself. Okay, so pay attention to those unnecessary repetitions. They also take up time, right? So the examiner will have less time to ask you more questions. The more questions the examiner can ask you and the more clear, concise answers they get, the higher your band score, okay? All right. Anonymous says, My first name is Yash and my surname is Nerukar. Please call me Yash. Well, anonymous, unless you're giving me a fake name, you're not staying anonymous anymore. 
ha, ha. Um, but anyway, the answer is great, okay? So my first name is Yash, and my surname, we usually put the my in there just to emphasize, and my surname is uh, Narurkar. Please call me Yash. All right, Yash. Um, that's great. Again, don't make small mistakes like missing is or missing my, okay? Be really natural. So my first name is Yash and my surname is Narurkar. Please call me Yash, okay? All right, so good. Okay, and then the examiner will say, uh, now I will ask you uh, a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where is your hometown? All right, this question, students, be careful. I hear a lot of candidates overcomplicate questions. So keep in mind, IELTS is not about the truth, okay? It is about finding the easiest path to the highest band score, okay? The reason I say that is because a lot of people, when the examiner, when a person asks them, what is your hometown, they get confused. They're like, does that mean like where I was born and raised? Or does it mean where I'm living right now? Uh, for some people, you know, they're living in a city for like 20 years, but they were born and raised somewhere else. The answer, it doesn't matter. Pick one and talk about it, whichever is easiest. Sometimes it's easier to talk about the city you're living in right now, because especially if, when the examiner also knows that city, they're, they're in the city, right? So, um, your hometown is where you spent most of your life. But in the IELTS, it doesn't matter if you talk about the town that you are currently living in. Okay? Um, it's debatable, all right? It's arguable. Does that make sense? Okay. So Pitam um, has this answer. Uh, my hometown is located in the Midwestern part of Nepal, which is near Lambini Medical College in the Palpa district. Um, that's confusing, Patam. Do you mean your house it, where you grew up in the hometown? So, um, and Patam, the question here is, what is the name of your hometown? Okay, we still don't know from this answer, Patam, we still don't know. Uh, what your hometown is actually called. At least I can't understand it. You said your hometown is located in Midwestern part of Nepal near Lumbini Medical College. <coughs> Excuse me. Palpa District. But what is it actually called? Okay. So a good answer to this question, just to give you a bit more help, and then maybe some of you will think about rephrasing this question, is I have spent most of my life here in Victoria, um, which of course is located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. in Western Canada, and it is surrounded by the uh, Pacific Ocean. Okay, so it's asking for the location. Where is your hometown? So here is my answer. I have spent most of my life here in Victoria, which of course is located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island in Western Canada, and it is surrounded by the Pacific Ocean. Okay, here now the examiner knows the name of my hometown and where it's located. And then I'm calling it my hometown because it's where I, sp I spent most of my life. Okay, so that is a clear answer. All right, uh, Farnaz, Farouk. Okay, 
says, my hometown is situated in the southeast part of our territory, which is a district of uh, Chittagong Division named Feni. It is an immense municipal. So, um, Farnaz, what's the name of your hometown? This is now the second answer that I see where I don't actually get the name of the hometown. So see how I introduced the name of my hometown at the very beginning here, students. I've spent most of my life here in Victoria, which of course is located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. So that also tells the listener my definition of my hometown. Okay, um, let's take uh, Jatinder's answer here. So students, if you don't answer the question, like if your answer is like this, this is going to be a band five because it's not a clear answer. Even if you're fluent, the examiner's like, okay, what's your hometown? Examiners cannot follow up their questions with questions that are not on their sheet. So they can't say, well, you still don't, you still haven't told me the name of your hometown. What is it? Okay. So this would also be a band five here because it just simply doesn't answer the question. We don't know, we know where it's located roughly, but we don't know the name of it, right? So Jatinder, one of our members says, my hometown is Ludhiana, which is in Punjab province of India. Specifically, I have been living in the heart of my city since my birth. That's much better. That can get you a band nine. Um, it's clear and fluent. Okay, so without mistakes. All right, so that makes sense. Okay, next question. So again, students, you really have to make sure that you think about the examiner as a person who does not know what you know. You cannot expect them to look inside of your brain and just know information that you have in there, like the name of your hometown, okay? If you speak like that, if you have a speaking interview where you you are talking to them like as if they're your friend who knows a lot of information about you, you will get a lower score, okay? Fennel, meanwhile, has hopped in on this class, one of our members, and has just made a Super Chat donation, which is very kind of you, Fennel. Thank you so much. I never even talk about Super Chat donations, but I really do appreciate them. Uh, Fennel says, today was my speaking about an unusual meal. Part three, I faced seven to eight questions as it was going quite smoothly, especially part three. I had linked three answers to part two. Fennel. That sounds awesome. I'm really curious how you will do when you get your mark in a couple of days. Um, if, well, of course, if you finish the other parts, uh, let us know how you did. So I will keep my fingers crossed that you get a great score. But having seven to eight questions in part three is usually a pretty good sign. It means that you're doing quite a good job in the uh, examiners gauging your higher level of speaking. So good job, Fennel. Nicely done. Come back and definitely let me know the results. I would love to get your testimonial, of course, and uh, congrats on, uh, on, on the speaking. I can tell you feel good about it. That's great. All right. Um, so getting back to uh, the questions here, okay? So the first question is, um, where is your hometown? And the next question is, what do you like about it, okay? So notice how Fennel said that um, he linked the uh, part three answers to part two. Linking answers is a really good idea. So um, I could say, for example, well, as I had mentioned, Victoria is surrounded by uh, the ocean. So there are lots of beaches where I enjoy uh, relaxing and swimming in the summer. The air is very fresh and um, the city has a lot of greenery where I can go for hikes with uh, friends and family. In fact, I went for a pleasant walk 
uh, this morning at Mount Doug Park to clear my mind before this exam. Okay, so there we go. All right. Uh, Fennel says, for me, the examiner did not ask for my ID as it was online. Thank you, Fennel, for that tip. So, yeah, don't expect questions, students. There's no guarantees, right? So if you're doing your exam online, the examiner will not ask for your ID, especially now because they have facial recognition software that they're using. Okay. All right, now this might seem like a long answer, but as long as you're fluent, the examiner will let you give this kind of an answer because it's on topic, it's connected, and it's new information, okay? So here we go, a little bit of repetition work. Um, so what do you like about it? Well, as I had mentioned, Victoria is surrounded by the ocean, so there are lots of beaches where I enjoy relaxing and swimming in the summer. The air is fresh and the city has lots of greenery where I can go for hikes with friends and family. In fact, I went for a pleasant walk this morning at Mount Doug Park to clear my mind before this exam. Okay, so this is the concept of answer, explanation, example with good connection between ideas. All right. Faizan Sharif says... As I have mentioned, Tobatek Singh is a small city, so there's less traffic, which is a cause uh, peaceful life. And it is one of the most clean city in Punjab. The environment is clean here. Okay, so Faizan, let me, well, let me put this back towards you, okay? Um, what band level is this, do you think? So communication. So let's, let's give some constructive criticism, some feedback for each other. Okay, so Faizan here says, as I have mentioned, Toba Texing is a small city, so there's less traffic, which is a cause peaceful life, and it is one of the most clean city of Punjab. The environment is clean here. What do you think this would get? So Brothers Gaming says six, Alan Zavadlal says 7.5. What do you think? Kunal says 6.5, Lazanda says 6, Raquea says 5.5, Iqbal says 7. So notice there's quite a range there. Lazanda says 5. Okay, well the question is why? So let's see if you can figure out the mistakes, okay? What are the mistakes in Faizan's response? And then maybe you'll get a better idea of the actual band score that it would get, okay? So good points, for example, okay? So the, as I have mentioned, is good because it's connecting, right? Okay, um, that's fine, that's a good one. But then we get into some troublesome areas, right? Which is a cause peaceful life. This is confusing and the grammar is off. And it is one of the most clean city. Again, grammar is off and confusing language. The environment is clean here. It's repetitive. It's wrong, right? Yes, Masenate caught that repetition. So what do you think is the band score now? Well, for those of you who said five, you're a bit closer. This would be about a band five level response, especially if there's some pronunciation and fluency features that are not exactly up to par. So this would be closer to a band five. There's one good feature here of the connection, but we're not really getting a clear answer here. We're getting repetition and we're getting some grammatical mistakes as well. So let's fix these, okay? Let's turn this band five into a band nine. As I have mentioned, Toba Texing is a small city, so there is less traffic, which leads to a peaceful life. And I quite enjoy this. Serenity, let's add a little bit in there. 
Um, here, this is important, students, because the question is asking, what do you like about your hometown? So you need to show that you enjoy, okay, uh, this part of your town, all right? You have to make your answers directly related or responding to the question, okay? All right, now just a bit of technical. In writing, you would not have a full stop here. You would have a comma. And it is one of the cleanest cities. Uh, one of many, right? And not most clean, but cleanest. So there's several grammatical mistakes and word form mistakes in a row, which makes uh, the coherence tricky. Uh, cities, okay? So it is one of the cleanest cities of uh, Punjab. Um, and I enjoy breathing, or I like, if you don't want to repeat enjoy, like breathing the fresh air day in and day out. Okay? So now we're on track to a band nine. Okay, notice the difference. As I have mentioned, Tobitak Singh is a small city, so there's less traffic, which leads to a peaceful life. And I quite enjoy this serenity. And it is one of the cleanest cities of Punjab. Uh, and I like breathing the fresh air day in, day out. Okay. Clear? All right, so there's quite a bit of correction there between that band five and band nine. Okay, band five, moderate, band nine, expert. All right, so focus on these features, focus on answers, explanations, examples, and we'll get into part one. So after the examiner has asked you a couple of questions like where's your hometown, what do you like about it, they're going to ask you some questions on a general topic, and talking about school or work is quite popular. Okay, so here the examiner says, let's talk about uh, school. Where do you go to school? All right, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Meanwhile, Yin, um, don't start your sentence with obviously. It's for the examiner, it's not obvious. They don't know you, so it's weird to say to the examiner, well, obviously, I've lived here for 20 years. How is that obvious? I have no idea who you are. Okay, so don't say that. All right, um, don't say honestly speaking and don't say obviously. Uh, the examiner, first of all, why would you lie to them? You don't need to be saying honestly speaking, just be honest. Um, and you don't need to say obviously because the examiner has no idea who you are, okay? So speak clearly, don't use these catchphrases, they won't get you points, okay? That's a myth, it's false information. All right, you can use some of those expressions correctly for specific questions, but you can't just randomly use them, okay? All right, let's take an answer here. Raquea says, uh, I used to go to school in a nearby village, Basait, that is about one kilometer from my home. Okay, uh, Raquea, so here, we're still at about a band five, okay? Why? Why is Raquea's answer a band five? I used to go to school in a nearby village, Basaith. It's about a kilometer from my home. It's still about a band five. Why? Tell me, everyone. I need you to tell me. I need you to be critical, quick thinkers here. Yes, Jatinder says it's in the past tense. It's off topic, right? The question is, where do you go to school, right? Exactly. Fuang says the grammar is off. It's like you're talking about where you went to school, but the examiner is ask, actually asking you, where do you go to school? So, Raquea, if you don't currently go to school, you need to say, currently, I do not attend school. Um, and then you might say, I used to go to school in a nearby village, Basait, that is about one kilometer from my home, but I had graduated uh, back in 2016, okay? 
So that would be now much closer to a band nine answer because we have clarity. Your tense has to match the question, students, okay? So where do you go to school? Currently, I do not attend school. All right, now think outside the box. All of you go to school somewhere. Uh, where do you go to school? <clears throat> all of you go to the same school somewhere. Where do you, all of you go to the same school? Okay, I want to also encourage you to really think outside the box, be quick and clever, because that will lead to high band scores um, on the IELTS exam. All of you go to the same school. Where do you all go to school right now? It's a, absolutely a clever answer that you could think of for this question. Okay, what do you think? What's inside my head? You all go to the same school. Where do you go? School is a place of learning. Keep that in mind, the definition of school. Iqbal says university. No. John Williams says high school. No. Arundeep says primary school. No. It's all, all of you go to the same school. What is that same school? Gailan Shirzad says English learning. You're much, much closer. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mal says AE help. Mal, you're actually the closest. So you could say, although I am not attending a physical school at the moment, I go to school in the comfort of my home when I attend online English classes. Uh, through YouTube. I just subscribed for Academic English Help, which has been giving me lots of great tips for the IELTS exam. Boom! There you go. Right? That's your quick and clever. Um, so, although I am not attending a physical school at the moment, I go to school in the comfort of my home uh, where I attend uh, online English classes through YouTube. I just subscribed for Academic English Help, which has been giving me lots of great tips for the IELTS exam, right? So that would be your band nine. Your IELTS examiner would be very impressed with that kind of an answer. They would say, hey, that is smart thinking, all right? Anahita, any place where you go to for learning, especially if it's structured and regular learning, is a school. A school is a place of learning. And that can be virtual, that can be physical. If it's structured and you're getting instructions regularly, especially from a knowledgeable instructor, then you are in school, okay? so. Iqbal says it's completely out of the box. I gave you a hint, Iqbal. I said all of you are in the same school right now. <laughs> I know it's tricky. All right, everybody, so think outside the box, okay? Um, you have to think, in today's world, you really have to think um, with specific examples. You have to reflect on what you're doing, and you have to have a global kind of perspective as well, considering technology, the environment, globalization. So there are a lot of elements that come into play for getting those high band scores, seven, eight, nine on the speaking, okay? All right, um, students, you are doing fantastic. Uh, let's practice now verbally, okay? So we're going to take some volunteers for speaking. And to do this, we're going to use our website, which is another great school of learning, okay? Um, this is the website here, I think Sarah, uh, can you please copy the instructions into the chat so everybody can see them, those people who are kind of joining in right now as well, and I'll walk everybody through. We're going to practice speaking with each other, which is really cool, so much closer to the actual speaking exam, and we can do that through our website for free, so don't panic, don't be like, oh, oh this is where I'm gonna have to pay. No, no, you don't have to pay, just take a deep breath, you can use this for free, just go through these steps, okay? So first of all, you go to aehelp.com. This is general IELTS here. aehelp.com is this one here, okay? And you click on this um, 
big red button if you want to join the premium IELTS package. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Or this green one here that's just behind me um, if you want to try using it for free, if you're not sure yet. And then once you do that, you'll be in your My Student account. And in your My Student account, you're going to have a computer-based practice exam, a full online course, you're going to have workbooks, uh, study plan, lesson videos, more than 100 uh, full no advertising speaking videos and practice speaking videos. Um, you're going to have all of the audio CDs for the exams and you will have your uh, student partner speaking right there. Okay, that's what we're using right now. This is free. This is where you can talk with me in the live classes or you can talk with other students and find uh, speaking partners, okay? So click the I accept start speaking. That means that you are responsible for your language, um, for your information that you share with others. Technically, you should be 18 to use this service. If not, you should have the permission of uh, your guardian, okay? Now you'll see lots of people in here. So uh, we can see in here uh, Muhammad Damin, um, who is a premium student as well. Nice to see you. Muhammad Amin, and then we have Pima. So you see the premium students and you see some of our regular users. We have Virgo in here. You will find me in here, okay? You will find me in here as master. Um, when you see my name, beside my name, you will see a blue envelope like with Pima here and you can click on that to send me a message and say, I want to volunteer, let me volunteer please, okay? All right, um, so we're going to uh, take a student and get right into it. Um, if you're having difficulties, if you're not sure what you're doing, ask for help. Sarah is in the chat. She can give you advice on what to do as well, okay? All right, uh, Virgo would like to volunteer. Are you ready? And uh, learn from each other, students. So the tips that I'm going to give you, the strategies for each a uh, volunteer is useful for many, many people. So pay close attention to your peers, to your fellow students, okay? All right, Virgo, if you're there, let me know and I will call you. I always send a message for students just to make sure you have an okay connection and um, you're ready, you didn't leave for a cup of coffee or bed or something like that. All right, here we go. Here's Virgo. Hello, Virgo. I hear kind of static on your end, so I, I guess something's going on. Can you check your microphone? I heard some movement there. Students, you definitely want to check your setup, your microphone, your connection. Ideally, you're using Wi-Fi or even better, a LAN connection because you're using audio software through one website and you're using video audio through another one, YouTube, right? So you need some good bandwidth for this. All right, Virgo, check out what's going on there and then um, I'll come back to you, okay? Uh, let's jump up to Muhammad Amin here. Muhammad Amin, are you ready? All right. So hang in there, students, because you don't know when you will get the chance. Okay, Muhammad Amin, let's give it a go here. Hello, Muhammad Damin. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. Awesome. Thank you for asking. Great. Um, this is the first time we're interacting, right? Muhammad Damin? Hey. Are you there? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, I was saying this is the first time that you're speaking to me, correct? Yes, correct. I was uh, watching YouTube live as well, so it okay. kind of got messed up right now. 
Okay. Yeah, you want to mute YouTube. So all you want to do is just mute YouTube yes, because yes, then I just muted. Yeah, because otherwise I you get did. double audio. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Muhammad Amin, uh, where are you right now in the world? I'm from Uzbekistan. From Uzbekistan, and why are you taking the IELTS exam? Uh, well, basically, uh, I studied at English department, and I've taken IELTS exam before. So I want to upgrade my score right now. Okay, that's a, that is a good thought. Let me help you with that. I'm going to ask you some questions, give me some nice full sentence answers, and then I'll give you some feedback. Are you ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. All right, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian, I will be your examiner. May I see your identification? Yes, sure, here is it. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where's your hometown? Okay, so I live in a small city. It's uh, Fergana. It's located in the north part of Uzbekistan. What do you like about it? Uh, well, actually, there are lots of things that I really like about my hometown. First of all, I would say uh, people. People are very kind and very considerate. Also, I like this weather in my hometown. Okay, I'm going to stop there and give you some feedback on that before we get uh -huh. too far. All right, um, so good news and bad news. Um, good news, you're fluent. You understand English quite well, I can tell. Um, you, I think, have a lot of vocabulary as well and you can use it quickly which is good however you really need to pay attention to your grammar and your content as well uh, you do not want to make mistakes with simple questions and answers so when i said may i see your identification you said yes sure here is it here it, uh, yeah. right yeah you caught it what's the mm -hmm. correct way to say it uh here it is here it is exactly so it's not here is it because that would be question yes. format right it's here yes. it is unfortunately even though technically in the aisles the examiner is not marking you for those first couple questions uh -huh. they are still formulating an opinion from the very beginning so first impressions are very important and if you make a mistake with a simple sentence like that grammatically you have basically made it impossible to get a band 9 or a band 8 because there's just no way that the examiner is thinking okay this is very good English when there's this kind of a mistake that early do you see what I'm saying so yes, so you really have to be careful so instead of saying yes sure here it is even when it's correct um, just stretch it out a bit so don't so here's a really important well we could call this a trick for everybody um, when you start your IELTS interview start slowly so don't start with your fastest English possible okay that's how you get yourself into trouble so especially when you're fluent as you are you can show that fluency later on if you're not speaking very fast at the beginning that's okay so you can say yes sure be specific here is my passport when you're specific like this you won't make that mistake that you made so here's my passport that I used to register with please take a look can you just try that yes sure uh, here. Yes. Mm -hmm. go for it yes yeah, sure uh, here, here it is or here you can see it no, use the full sentence. Here's my passport that I used to register with. Please take a look. Okay, so uh, here's my passport that I used for registration. Please take a look. Much better. See, now you're fluent. You didn't make a mistake. So in my mind, you're still set for a band 8 or a band 9 possibly. Okay, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Plus, you're not rushing into your answers. So you're decreasing your chances of making awkward mistakes. Okay, so start a bit mm -hmm. slower. Start with full sentences. All right. Now, um, okay. also make sure that you complete your ideas. Okay, so I asked you, uh, what do you like about your city? And um, you said to me that you like the people. And then you said to me that you like the weather, right? 
especially when you're doing the exam online and some now you can even do it remotely in some countries I have no idea what the weather is like in Fergana. So if you tell me that you like the weather, you have to explain to me what that means. So you have to say, for example, I really like the weather. It's sunny most of the year and very pleasant in the summer around 29 degrees. Then I'm like, oh, okay, that's why you like the weather, right? But if you just tell me I like the weather, it's kind of like, mm, okay. So do you want to try that? What do you like about your hometown? Uh, okay, so uh, there are lots of uh, there are lot uh, there are lots of things that I like about my hometown. First of all, uh, I would say uh, people of my city uh, because they are uh, very kind and very considerate. And the second thing uh, that I like about my hometown is that uh, we have a steady weather. It most of the time it's very sunny, so. Good. Okay, and then just stop. That's fine. If you remember to say most of the time it's very sunny and 20 degrees, fine. If you forget the 20 degrees, that's not the end of the world, although numbers are really useful for explanations. But that's a much better answer. So now you're much more in that 7, 5, 8, 8, 5 range, okay? So okay. the first time that you were speaking, you were kind of at the 6, 5 range. Now when you uh -huh. were speaking, you were at the 7, 5 range. So there's a clear band score difference in those answers, okay? So focus on, okay. pra on practicing that. Thank you for being a premium student. Are you enjoying the course so far? Yes, I do. Okay, yes. awesome. Um, yes, I am, actually. <laughs> nice correction, yeah. And definitely pay attention to those self-corrections. So when you catch yourself making these kinds of slight awkward mistakes, then correct mm -hmm. yourself every single time. Always take that extra few seconds to correct yourself, okay? Okay. All right, Muhammad Amin, keep it up. You're doing great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye for now. Mm -hmm. All right. Thumbs up for Muhammad Damin. Um, that was really good. Okay. So hopefully you picked up some tips there. One really important tip, obviously, was start slow. Okay. Start start a bit slower. Uh, let's take Pima, or another premium student that's just under here. Let's. Uh, uh, we haven't spoken to Pima, I think, ever either yet. So let's see if what Pima sounds like. Pima, are you ready? Okay, and I will hop around in the volunteers, so it's not like I'm going to go through from top to bottom. So hang in there. Um, and uh, Pima, if you're ready, let me know so that we can connect. All right. We've got uh, about 40 minutes left in this class, so lots of time for volunteers and tips and strategies and practice. Students, you should be also, of course, speaking. So when you hear your peers saying these sentences when you see me write them down make the corrections okay so Pima if you're not there I'm not sure if you're there listening I'm going to give you a five second countdown okay and then uh, you can try again in the future um, so Pima five four three <laughs> two one all right um, let's uh, let's reach out to uh, Chayani, who used to be one of our channel members for a long, long time. Um, Chayani, are you ready? If you're there, let me know. Yes, all right. Um, Hi, Chayani. Hi, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing great, how about you? I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking. Um, Chayani, yeah. let's do this. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for a couple of questions? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's jump right into it. So you've obviously volunteered numerous times in the past. So let's get into yeah. some good practice. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about school. Where do you go to mm -hmm. school? Well, although I graduated from 2021, Right now, I'm currently as a student of Bachelor Degree of Biotechnology that I'm attending an online um, class right now. Uh, I mean, in the past time. So I usually went on an on online class uh, through Zoom for two hours. What other schools have you attended? Um, aside from uh, the Bachelor Degree of Biotechnology, I have attended the dance school that 
uh, I been there almost three years, uh, almost three years that I learn about the geography of dance, um, also the traditional dance that from my country. Um, I remember that uh, uh, when I was in the 16 years old, I learned uh, the loss of traditional dance from um, uh, the East District of Which Indonesia. Which was your favorite? Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Which was your favorite? Um, my fav as I said mentioned earlier, my favorite um, subject of the class is about traditional dance that I also can uh, popularize the traditional dance through uh, the people because traditional dance is kind of like um, crucial um, uh, the crucial uh, culture of Indonesia. All right, so um, Chayani, not bad. You need to slow down a bit and focus a bit more on the grammar, consistently having good grammar, okay? So you have okay. some what's called fossilized mistakes. It's where you have made that mistake so often that it's become a part of your language. So you need to unlearn these fossilized mistakes. Like for example, missing the past tense ED on the end of uh, certain verbs when you're talking about the past, okay? Um, okay, so sorry. really, so really slow down a bit and emphasize the grammar. You need to your speed, your fluency is fantastic. Your accuracy is low, so you need to increase your accuracy, even if that means decreasing your fluency. Um, so you said, so I asked you, where do you go to school? And you said, well, although I graduated from 2021, what's the mistake in that sentence? Mm, okay, uh, the sentence also should be presented in right now. Mm, but just, just grammatically, there's grammatically a, a mistake yeah. in this sentence. Although I graduated from 2021. One word is the wrong word. Which word is the wrong word in this sentence? Mm -hmm. Or in this phrase, I should say. In, is in 2000. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, not from 2021, but in. So you corrected yourself. And what I wanted to show you here, and this is an important point for everybody, is that many of you know the correct way after you look at it carefully. And Yanni, you know the correct way. So well, although I graduated in 2021. And when you make that mistake once or twice, it's not the end of the world, even though it's awkward. But when you make it again and again throughout the interview, it's going to start costing band scores, okay? So you That's have it. to really smooth out these mistakes, Chani. And the way to do that is by listening back to your recordings, saying it correctly, slowing down a little bit, and really just focusing on picking up that accuracy, okay? That's All right. It. Also, you're correct. In this question, you should have been just speaking about your online classes that you're doing right now. Uh, don't talk about the although I graduated. Because see here, in the next question, you can, you can talk about that. So what other schools ha have you attended? Oh, I had attended uh, university prior. I graduated in 2021 with a bachelor's degree in biotechnology. Can you repeat this word after me? And this is for everybody, bachelor's degree. Bachelor degree. Bachelor's degree. Bachelor degree. We show possession here, so it's not. We say bachelor degree sometimes, but it's more accurate to say bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree. One more time, Chinese. Yes. Bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree. Much better. Okay, that was your clear pronunciation there. The first time that you said it, because you said it so quickly in the original answer, I had to kind of do one of these in my head to figure out what you were saying. It didn't really come across clear, okay? So slow it down a bit, Chayani, okay? Slow it down a bit, all right? Okay, yeah. All right. Any questions? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, that I was a bit surprised for the last question because it is kind of like related to the previous question. Like Absolutely. I mean, you shouldn't be surprised. They're connected questions. So don't be surprised. A any question can come up in the IELTS, right? So um, so just take a deep breath. And if you do get surprised, okay, what can you say? Mm, let me think for a while. Yeah, Give you can ask. Exactly. You can ask for time, right? Here, I'll give everybody kind of an interesting one that I haven't used before. 
uh, <laughs> this question, you can say, has caught me off guard. Please allow me a moment. Okay, so if you're genuinely caught off guard, and this is an interesting idiomatic expression, caught off guard means that you get surprised by it. Okay, can you repeat after me? This question has caught me off guard. This question has caught me off guard. Please allow me a moment. Please allow me a moment. Okay, now ideally you're not really using this in part one. Part one questions shouldn't be catching you off guard. So what other schools have you attended? primary school, vocational school, English uh, tutoring classes, dance classes. It shouldn't really catch you off guard, but if it does, you can use this sentence. Okay, Chayani? Okay, sir. All right. Uh, Keep up the good studies. Okay, and we'll talk right, again. Sir. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bye. Thank you, sir. You're bye. welcome. Bye. All right. That was Chayani, a regular student, and she's improving. Just needs to slow down a little bit. All right. Let's go to uh, the bottom of our list here and uh, see if anybody is volunteering. Uh, let's uh, check out Guy Lan, uh, another one of our premium uh, students on the website. By the way, for those of you who want access to the premium course, you should see a red button somewhere at, near the top there. Um, and you can click on that uh, to get the premium package. Uh, I don't see it because I'm in the premium version. Uh, Guy Lan, are you ready? It's nice to see our new premium students volunteering in the live class. That's great. Guy Lan, if you are there, let me know and we'll get into a little bit of Q&A with some of the uh, questions about school. So hopefully you have been hanging out for most of the class and you're still in the group here. So if you're listening to me and if you're seeing my message pop up and you're hearing the little ping from my end, Guy Lun, then just send me a yes. So you should be able to respond by saying, yes I am or here I am or ready, ready as I'll ever be. Again, this is why I said students, even if you're near the bottom or lower down in the list, just hang on. Okay, Guy Lun, if you're there, we'll give you a five count. Four, three, two, <laughs> one. All right, Guy Lan. Well, next time, hang in there. Artemisa, just beside Guy Lan. Are you ready? I believe Artemisa and I have spoken before. I think Artemisa might have even booked a full speaking interview practice with me at some point. Artemisa, if you're hearing me, let me know. If you're there, send me a sign. Artemis, I'm guessing the female version of the male name Artemis. Yes, all right. Hi, Artemisa. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm good. Is this the first time we're speaking to each other? No, I booked this speaking interview with you. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I thought maybe not, though, because in the chat you were writing, but I'm not, and I thought the end of it was going to be, but I'm well, not I the same sure Artemisa. The, <laughs> I wasn't sure about the chat because uh, it's first time using it. Okay, but Even, it's working. Yeah, it's working, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Artemisa, did you do the IELTS exam after we had the speaking interview practice? Yes, I did the spe I did the IELTS and I got the same po the same uh, band. Yeah, and you need a better band, right? Yeah, I have the exam uh, this Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's my fifth time. Yeesh. Yeah, you shouldn't. So ideally, you're not. You know, you need to, you want to make sure that you're improving before you book your next exam. So, um, just my advice is, you know, check to make sure that you have improved and reached the level that you need because it's expensive. Five times. It is really expensive. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Spend a lot of money. It's a thousand and five hundred dollars already. I know. But yeah. My uh, my uh, report from CGFNS will be expired pretty soon in February, and that's why I am rushing to get this 
bands and this test done and okay well are you, know, are you speaking english as much as possible like at home with your family with your friends you're saying hey stop talking to me in any other language just talk to me in english yes you're doing this <laughs> i speak english every day but uh, you know the way how is the test is, is making me so nervous and it's giving me anxiety when they especially when i speak with someone and they are telling me oh uh, i'm recording you now and okay my brain is getting frozen that time just imagine that the examiner is your loving grandmother or your grandfather and they've got some delicious cookies baking in the oven that you're going to get to <laughs> eat after okay so just how, how you how you can do that when someone is uh, watching you like you are an uh, alien or something <laughs> Just smell the cookies. Smell the cookies. Oh my god. <laughs> the yeah, chocolate I, chip cookies. I will do in the that oven. this time. I don't know. I will let you know. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. You deserve to be there. And hey, remember, the sun will shine tomorrow. I mean, you've already done it four times. I know that sounds horrible to say, but this, you know. This is my fifth time. <laughs> I know. That's why I said you've already done Crazy, it four yeah. times. So the sun will shine tomorrow, right? So just just be yourself. Take a deep breath. I, it's I, fine. Uh, um, I mailed them and um, I spoke with one of those. So who's taking care of the exam and everything and she said I, I spoke with her about one hour in the phone and she said you have these band scores and I said yes and she said it's impossible and I said it is impossible <laughs> is it is impossible is uh, possible because I'm getting these points yeah and she said, I don't know I don't know you have to visualize she was giving me some advices but I don't know I will well, try this. unfortunately, in the IELTS exam, the examiner can only give you the score that you present them. They can't give you the score that they feel you deserve, right? I mean, you know, that would be great if we lived in a world like that, but that's not how it works, unfortunately. So they can really only judge you on what you present to them, okay? But yeah. I'll help you out here. So you, you'll do great, okay? And uh, you know what? If you have some questions and if you're uncertain, send me an email and we can maybe try to figure something out where we can help you out a bit, okay? I was thinking to book an interview for tomorrow because I know it's going to be 24 hours after you book the interview, but I, I'm not sure if you have... Send me an email and I'll see if I have some time where I can squeeze you. And it also depends on our time zones, right? Because I'm on the Pacific time zone. So, yeah. um, but, send, but send me an email. Let me know I what will. time you're thinking and then we can figure it out, okay? I will. Okay, Artemisa, let me ask you a couple of questions about school. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. Um, which was your favorite school and why? Uh, my my favorite school was uh, high school because uh, we had a lot of fun in that period of time with uh, my classmates and uh, teachers uh, since we organized every every week uh, I don't know how to say it. It's, uh, we used to go every week in excursions or we went in different city, cities to visit and uh, uh, learn more about what is the your favorite subject? The culture they had. I'm sorry, I didn't. What is your favorite it. subject? My favorite subject was uh, history because uh, I really love to learn about the, the culture and the way how we, how, how we came here or, you know, the way how the history went and how... What is a typical day in high school in your country? Uh, high schools usually uh, start the lesson around 8 o'clock until uh, 2 p.m. Depends how many hours you have per day actually, but usually it's uh, around uh, 6 hours to 7 hours per day and you have different subjects. Uh, for example, one subject will be an hour or an hour and a half lesson. That means, and then you have the, another subject, so it will be all these hours. 
Uh, okay, that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. All right, Artemisa, let me give you some feedback. Yeah, so band score wise, that would be considered about a band six to six point five, okay, at best. And I know you want to get higher, and I know you deserve higher. Like you should be getting closer to a seven, even a seven point five. The main mistake that you're making is you are trying to speak the truth and you're trying to speak your mind. And speaking our mind is a very tricky situation to get around to avoid doing because, you know, you, you'll probably ask me like, well, Adrian, how do I not speak my mind? I mean, how do I not say what I'm thinking? Right? Yeah, it's hard um, to make stories for me. I don't know. It's how hard to make it. stories. Don't make up stories. Just choose the easy path. I think you're getting yourself into unnecessarily difficult situations and that's causing problems with your fluency and that's showing the examiner that you're lacking some vocabulary. What you want to do as the candidate is you want to show the examiner instead of showing them that I don't have this vocabulary. Like, for example, I don't have the vocabulary to say we went on many field trips. OK, oh, that, yeah. that's what you were trying to say is we went on many uh, field trips. Uh, so during they're called high field school. trips? Oh. Yeah, they're called they're called field trips. So instead of showing me that you're missing the vocabulary for field trips in high school, you want to show me that you have the vocabulary to explain to me why it was your favorite subject. So instead of saying field trips, you can say we went to many places during high school to learn about people and cultures. We visited other cities, we visited museums, okay? So I'm avoiding the word field trips. I'm trying to get around it. I'm pretending yeah. for the examiner that it's not that I don't know that word, but I'm just using other words because I'm talking about it differently. So it takes practice to do that. Don't try to force your brain into thinking about a word in your own language and then trying to translate it into a word that you don't know, okay? Remember your descriptive paraphrasing, all right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of got yourself into the same situation again and again where you wanted to give deeper, better explanations, but you were missing the vocabulary or the grammar and then your question started strong and then it finished quite weak and that's why it got you down to that band six. You started the answers at about a band seven, seven, five, okay? So I might even suggest to you in this exam to try to just speak shorter when you're not sure what's going on and if you get stuck instead of um, showing me that you're stuck go to an example so like I'll never forget when our teacher took us to the Central Park to feed the ducks we had such a great time you know so you jump to this imaginary example right oh, okay. Okay. okay so try that strategy so speak a little bit shorter and when you feel like your explanations are getting overly complex immediately stop yourself and give a strong example let's just try that once uh, which was your favorite uh, school and why my favorite school was a uh, high school period uh, because uh, we had uh, many you see i went again in the same way yeah we went uh, in different places every week to learn more about uh, culture and uh, the way how people lived in those uh, cities. And um, also we went in many museums and uh, we had such a good time. With Perfect. Our Stop there. Perfect. Stop there. Okay. So this is what you need to do. Okay. So over the next few days, practice these questions. Don't even really pay too much attention to part two, part three. Just focus on these part one questions because if you're able to train your brain to do this for the part one questions, that will transfer to part two and part three and uh, you will get a better grade. Okay. So this is what you want to focus on is getting yourself out of these um, difficult situations that you're getting yourself into and I think you'll get a better score for sure with by at least a half a band if not more okay okay I really appreciate it you're welcome okay Artemisa send me that email I'll be waiting for it okay I will I will okay. thank you have a good day you too bye Artemisa bye bye all right let's keep our fingers crossed for Artemisa that uh, that she gets a great score this time on the IELTS exam and doesn't have to do it a sixth time. Artemisa, definitely talk to me, communicate. I wanna help you. I don't like hearing that students are doing IELTS more than two times. Two times, okay. Three, four, 
I know it happens, but we want to avoid that, okay, students? And one way to do it is use the premium course. Contact us, send us emails, know what you have to do, okay? All right, uh, let's take somebody else here. So uh, we've got Mark here. Let's see if Mark is available. I have to refresh my page, everybody. Um, so you might have to do the same here so that I can see you. Okay, I'm going to send Mark let me do a shift refresh because I don't see Mark. Yeah, so you might have to refresh your page, everybody, so that you're with me again here. All right. Sometimes when uh, we have so many people in the chat, you might have to do a refresh to uh, reconnect to the chat servers. Okay, Mark. Mark says, yes, Mark, are you ready? I think Mark is ready. Mark's paying attention. All right, Mark, if you're there, just give me another yes, and then I will ping you. Okay, just making sure the connection's good here. All right, Mark. Hello, Mark. Mark, I cannot hear you. I'm not sure what device, operating system, and connection you've got going on or how you have your microphone system set up, enabled for the website, but I don't hear you. Maybe you probably hear me through YouTube, but I don't hear you. Okay, Mark, check out what's going on on your end and then try again. So for some students, you might need to use a VPN. Um, your IP might be being bounced depending on your uh, service provider through a location that doesn't work very well. Okay, all right, Mark. Uh, let me uh, try uh, Karina. Karina, are you ready? Karina, another one of our premium students. I think we've spoken to Karina in the past. Karina's ready. Hello, Karina. Are you there? I don't hear you, unfortunately. Well, wait a second. Sometimes it takes a minute for students to learn what's going on or to check their connection or close some apps or programs that might be eating up bandwidth. Okay, Karina, troubleshoot, check it out. We'll try somebody else here. Um, let's see, Mark sent me a message. Mark says, I can hear you. Yes, but I can't hear you, Mark. So you need to check your microphone most likely. Okay. Let's try Parbej here at the bottom, waiting very patiently. Parbej, are you ready? We'll find someone. Okay. Again, students, when you're using this system, so when you log into your My Student account and you open up the student partner speaking, test it out with other people. So send them a message, uh, link up with them, check what's going on. And then uh, once you've made the right connection, then you'll know, okay, that's how it works. Okay. Parbej. Hello, Parbej. I can kind of hear something. Hello, sir. Hi. Yes, I heard you pick up there. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Parbej, I believe this is our first time speaking to each other, correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, good for you to take the leap of faith. Be brave. That's how you get confident in speaking. Parbej, can you tell everybody where you are in the world right now? So I'm from Nepal. From Nepal, and whereabouts in Nepal? From Kathmandu. From Kathmandu. It's my one of my favorite uh, city names in the entire world. I don't know why. I just love it. I think it sounds <laughs> awesome. Kathmandu. All right, um, Parbej, why are you taking the IELTS exam? So I'm taking the IELTS exam for my further study in abroad. 
Okay. Uh, for bachelors or for masters? For my bachelors. For your bachelors. All right. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions about school. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. What is your favorite subject in school? So, my favorite subject when I was in school and now is math. Why? Because I like to like to solve so uh, so many complex numericals, and I love to solve many kind of questions that tackle our mind. And some we need to be more focused on that question, I, and we have to uh, put more put some more extra efforts to do that question and I love challenges so I like math what is a typical day in high school in your country the typical days in my high school what is a typical day in high school in your country Okay, that is the end of part one. So if you get stuck, then the examiner will end the question, okay? So you have to speak. You have to say something, okay, uh, to show that you're still thinking. Um, so say something like, give me a moment to think about it, or say, can you please repeat that question? Just say, can you please repeat that question? Parjab, are you still there? Did I lose you? Maybe we lost our connection. Parbej, sorry, Parbej, are you still there? Mm, I think we lost Parbej for some reason. But anyway, Parbej, if you're listening through YouTube, I'm going to give you a little bit of feedback, okay? So your answer was about a band five for that first one. Make sure to always explain yourself when you're giving answers, okay? So if your favorite subject is math, then let the examiner know why and do not overcomplicate. So the missing vocabulary there uh, was not numericals. Anybody know what words uh, he should have used instead of numericals? Solving many questions was okay. That was a good way to get out of that vocabulary situation. Um, but the word he was looking for, instead of numbers, it wasn't numbers. So he wanted to say, it starts with an E. So my favorite uh, subject in school is math because I love to solve Equations, that's right, Bogdan, that's right, Chayani, Raquea, equations. My favorite subject in school is math because I love to solve equations. Uh, I love a good challenge um, because I feel ecstatic when I come up with the right answer, okay? All right, um, and don't say we have to focus. So, so students, don't use the we and the you, okay? Especially with me and math because I'm not a big fan of math. I had problems with it in school, so it's not true. I mean, math these days, I like it, but, uh, but don't say we, okay? You never know with your examiner. All right, students, I'm going to stop the Q&A here for today, but you are, of course, more than welcome to continue practicing using the website and talking to each other. Uh, right now, we're using aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Use the premium uh, package there. For general IELTS, it's gltshelp.com, okay? So these are the websites that power these live classes, definitely. Uh, use the premium version of the course. We're always upgrading these uh, products and services for you as well. So adding new materials, new videos all the time. Again, just click that big red button there to join the premium package that's right above my head there. Sarah, uh, thank you so much for moderating the class. I saw that you had quite a bit of work there today with uh, spammy content and other disturbing 
uh, intrusions. So thank you for taking care of that and uh, making it a little bit cleaner and better learning environment for everybody. Uh, Raquea, Lemia, Andrew, thank you so much. Raquea, don't give up. I will definitely look for you later on as well. Good studies, everybody. Keep up the good work. I will be back tomorrow with two reading classes. One reading class for members. So, Raquea, come back. You can do a bit of reading, Q&A. Uh, same thing for the other members. For everybody, you can come back, watch that class, because afterwards we'll have a reading for subscribers. We'll be taking reading materials from our course content. So... Until then, you can check out the websites. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I wish all of you a fantastic day or an awesome sleep, a good night if it's late in your country. And I hope to see you all tomorrow. Bye for now, everybody.